we hit 10,000 subscribers and I am so thankful to you. Stick around because I've got a surprise for you. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you for watching. I wanted to say a big, huge thank you to you because you guys got me to 10,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for supporting small businesses. My little business needs people like you and I truly appreciate you. I have a gift for you. So please stay tuned until the end of this video. I want you to win and there's a couple things you've got to do for me so that I can get some cool products to you. All right, here we go. One of you lovelies is going to win a cool box filled with products that I sell at my store. Meanwhile, this project was inspired by the video that I did on that door casing. I had so many people ask me how I created it. Unfortunately, I didn't film that. So I made something else recreating. It, it's the same process. It's a different project because, you know, I didn't need another door casing. So I hope you guys enjoy it. This is how I built the other one and this one. I will put a link to the other video if you missed that one. You guys are awesome. Here's the door casing. All right, here we go. So you need a lot of sharp cutting tools or a lot of blades for the one that you have. You're gonna cut up your cardboard and then you have to figure out how you're going to make your design. I used this mandala that I found on the internet as my inspiration, kind of searched around my house and found something that I could trace in order to kind of get the basic shape for it. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna trace it out and then use the tracings that I made as a template. This is definitely a time consuming process, but it's pretty rewarding. It comes out so cool. And if you paint it right, it really doesn't look like cardboard at all. So it's well worth it. If you're a creator, if you're a maker, ah, it's fun, right? going to be our base. I'm going to go ahead and cut two of those out because we want to start building this up so that it's three dimensional and um, has some depth and you know just looks cooler. In my mind I was kind of always thinking of like a wedding cake like I wanted tiers so the bigger tier and then it needs to go smaller smaller smaller. So I trace that again, and that way, right now, I can start working on my second tour tier, but have it placed properly. All right, third tier. Um, I wanted to do something a little different, so I cut a triangle out of wood. That way I'd have my basic, you know, triangle, my angles, right? I'm gonna use that stencil and um, that'll give me the little bumpy dealies on the top. Now that I have one of those cut out, I'm gonna go ahead and trace that eight times, I think I did. And that way I can cut all those out and that'll be my third tier. dogs don't they have the coolest outdoor sofa that they can just chill on while I do my work I'm gonna go ahead and trace and cut out a couple of different size bowls and that'll give me my center one so that'll be what tier four and five I think 
Okay, so now we need a bunch of straight strips. This is what we're gonna use to glue, to give it some depth, to give it that three dimension. I cut those out on the saw. You could definitely cut them by hand, but eh, it's a lot faster if you just cut them all on the saw. When I did my last project, I found that my glue gun just wasn't cutting it. So I did go to Home Depot and buy this one. I think it was $20, and then I ended up getting the long industrial strips of glue. Um, just saves time. It goes so fast um, instead of having to wait, you know, for your glue to like melt and then you gotta wait and these just burn right up. It's perfect. Now that we have that done, let's go ahead and glue these two pieces together. Now we have our bottom tier and we're ready to keep moving on up. this one I decided to see if I could glue the entire thing at one time and what do you know it worked I'm, I'm I moved pretty fast don't get me wrong but it was still wet and it still adhered I was super stoked on up let's get our little triangles on there while I'm doing this I'm thinking about all the things that you could do with cardboard and again if you paint it right it really doesn't look like cardboard so I'm thinking about having a competition on my Facebook page I'm not sure if you follow me over there. It's Windmill Vintage Designs on Facebook. Wouldn't that be fun to have a nice cool contest to see who could create the coolest thing out of cardboard? I just think that'd be awesome. So head on over there if you want to um, be a part of that. In the last cardboard structure, I attempted to use spackle to fill in those corrugations and I soon got tired of that. This time I used the hot glue because I had it out. All right, it's time to start painting the fun part. Let's go ahead and start with layered chocolate and we're gonna do a pouncing motion. That way our highs and lows when we pounce are gonna give us a lot of texture. DIY paint is a clay-based paint, so it's pretty darn thick compared to other brands. It's going to be um, good. We're gonna add a little bit more. Let's put in some Durham's wood putty. That's gonna give us even more texture you can get Durham's at any hardware store. Meanwhile, let's throw in some Summer Crush because we're going for a rusty look, so we're gonna make kind of a, kind of a burnt color. Now we're gonna do some pretty sloppy raised stenciling. So using my putty knife, my Durham's wood putty with my paint, I'm just gonna go ahead and apply that on. We're gonna pull that stencil straight up and it's gonna give us a little bit more oomph for this project. Germs is a really good ray stencil medium. You don't have to be sloppy about it. If you wanted to take your time and do it nice, you can get great, crisp, nice one. We let that dry overnight, and now it's time to start with the next process. I wanted to add a little bit more dimension to it, so I thought I would take a little bit of sea glass and pounce that here and there. We're gonna be covering most of that back up, but it's fun just to have a little bit peeking out. Let's go back with some more rust. So I'm gonna take my layer of chocolate again. This time I'm gonna add more Summer Crush. I'm gonna give it even more of a burnt look because um, I really am kind of going for like a rusty look. Mm -hmm. 
I went through my drawer and pulled out quite a bit of my metallics. So I'm just going to use a variety of them and apply them here and there um, to try to give it a little bit more oomph. Let's hit that raised stenciling. Let's hit the bubbling of the glue. Um, just anything to kind of ah, just make it cooler, right? just going to start layering those on in a random pattern. Okay, so geez, if I wanted to add lights, I probably should have done that before I put it all together. But it was a um, an afterthought, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. So I went ahead, drilled some holes, and like tried to shove my little light in there. I actually ended up using the stapler. Now we are back at my store. Let's go ahead and get this up there, see if it looks cool next to the other door casing. just drilled a hole in the back of the cardboard and that way it would hook right up there on this nail. I think it came out kind of cool. What do you think? Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you stayed till the end because I have a cool paint giveaway that I'm going to give one of you guys. So what I need from you, you need to please go to my website. It's windmillvintagedesigns.com. I'm also going to put that in the comment section. Go over there, I need you to sign up for my email list. That way, I have a safe place and a safe way to contact you privately so that I can ship this wonderful surprise out to you. You guys are awesome, and you do me one more favor, make sure you're subscribed, please, and if you'd share my channel or one of my videos, that would just make my day. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much.